This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim Mistlands video. Today we're going to cover hidden tips and secrets of the Mistlands. Let's get to it. When you are out adventuring in the Mistlands, you're going to come across these large skulls and these large rib cages. Now you probably already know that if you break these, these will give you black marble. What you may not know though is these skulls actually contain a hidden secret. If you break through the top of the skull like you see that I have done here, inside you will find a giant's brain and that brain is soft tissue something that you need in order to refine either once you have broken off a large enough chunk of the skull that you can get into the brain you can just hit it with your pickaxe and mine it like normal and you will see that it will give you a bunch of soft tissue there should be anywhere from 50 to 60 give or take a little bit in here by the time you are all done after hollowing out this giant skull and taking all of its brain you can see i got a total of of 53 soft tissue. Not bad considering it's a lot easier to get in here and get these than it is to fight the divergers in their base. The next tip goes along with this and that is these petrified bone structures can go relatively deep underground. If you take a look here, this rib cage it goes all the way underground. If I keep mining, you'll see that it can get pretty deep there depending on how the land has generated. So make sure that you do dig down a little bit if you want to maximize the amount of marble that you get from these because large chunks of these rib cages and even the skulls can be sunk underground. Speaking of things being sunk underground, the swords and other metal structures that you see as well, like the armor, can also go pretty far underground. You can see here the ground level went right across this way and there was a large chunk of this sword buried. What you may not realize is if you dig out around that structure, you can break it and if you break it after digging out around it, all of it should crumble and allow you to harvest it all at once. There you go. Large chunk of iron all in one go, super easy to get. Whether it's faster to dig out around it or just mine it is gonna be something I'm going to leave up to you. I'm not 100% sure, but I just wanted to let you know that if you dig out around them, it is possible to break them in one break. The next thing you may not know about has to do with ticks. You can roll to get ticks to fall off. Now, it's not always a guaranteed chance, but it is a possibility if you take a look here. If I roll, they come off of me pretty easy. The reason I'm putting this one in here is some people seem to not know that this is a possibility, so I wanted to let you know. The other thing is one easy way to deal with these guys is to, well, roll to get them off of you so they're not stunning you, but to use an AOE weapon to knock them back and keep them off of you. And if they are on you, an AOE weapon will even hit the ones that are on your back. So you can use something like the iron sledge or any sledge hammer as well as one of the pole arms with their special attack. The next two tips involve these little diverger or verger, however you pronounce their names, don't know, don't care. The next two tips involve their outposts. While you are out running around, you are going to come across a lot of these little outposts. Some will have them in it, some will be run down and will be dungeons. But for this tips video, we're focusing on the ones that actually have the divergers in it. Not only do these contain a few things you need like soft tissue and the extractors, or can contain those things. You can also do a few other cool things with these outposts as well. If you take a look, I don't have any sneaking skill. And if I start sneaking around them, that skill will raise. And this is really cool because you can safely raise your sneaking skill around these guys. As long as you do not attack them or mess with any of their stuff, your sneaking skill will eventually raise. There you go. You can see it popped up to one. And there it goes. Now it's two. So you can just set in here and just do loops around their structure or whatever you want to do and safely raise your sneaking skill because they will protect you if anything comes up on the base to attack it. Now, the other interesting thing about these is they are a ready-made base and you can easily take them over. All you have to do is destroy this ward. Now, do note that once you do this, you're going to anger all of the little verger, dwarves, gnomes, whatever they are in here. So you're going to want to kill them first. Now, once you have killed them, all you have to do is safely remove the ward like you see there 
and then you can actually access the door. This is cool because you can't get these doors any other way. If you take a look here, I have the admin ability active that lets me build anything, and you can see here that those doors do not exist. Once you destroy the ward and you move in, you're gonna want to repair it because as you can see, it's not in the best shape. In order to do that, all you need to do is to build a stone cutter's workbench and you just place that down somewhere inside of the building and then you can go through and repair everything. However, you won't be able to repair your door until you place down a black forge. If I place down one of those and make sure that I turn the no placement cost back off, you can see I am able to repair the door. Why the door relies on the Black Forge, I don't know, but it does. You need to place one down in order to repair it. However, everything else should be able to be repaired. Well, all the stones should be able to be repaired as long as you have a stone cutter's workbench down. And now you have a already built house complete with its own demisters and a little bit of fortification here in the front as well, giving you an absolutely fantastic way to start off your journey in the Mistlands. The next tip is to turn off your music when you are in the Mistlands. Just go into your settings, go to audio, and drag the music slider all the way down. And that is because visibility in the Mistlands is absolutely brutal. So you have to rely on audio audio to give you an idea of the things that are around you. A good example of that is if you listen, You can hear footsteps in the distance and you can also, and this is another tip, if you look, you can see a little bit of splashy splash there. That is a seeker soldier there in the distance. You can actually see their splashes when they kick around and step around through the mist. And you can also hear their footsteps well before they see you. You can also hear the, and I was told I was pronouncing it wrong when I called them gal. Apparently it's pronounced y'all. You can hear the gal or y'all in the distance well before before they see you as well. This is much more difficult to do if you have the music blaring, distorting all of the sounds around you. You can actually harpoon the y'all. There we go. And if I fall down to the ground, I will pull him down towards me if I move down towards the ground a little bit. And if you are fighting one of these with a friend, it is possible to drag them far enough down to the ground in certain situations to allow your friends or friend to hit them with an AOE weapon, something like a hammer, or even just hold them still a little bit more so that your friends can shoot at them. The next tip is roots will refill with energy so you can actually drain the roots dry but they will still produce they will just produce slower however if you do not collect from them for some time they will regenerate all of their energy allowing you to collect a whole bunch of sap from them much more quickly and the little glowing patterns on them like you see here and here are indicators of how full of energy they are as they start to run out of energy these patterns will start to dim and you will see less of them on the root itself. You can see now that looking at it, it also tells me that the ancient roots glow is fading. That is another indicator of how much energy is left inside of it. So it will tell you that it is full of energy, then that it is fading, and then it will tell you that it is tapped out and it seems to be all dried up. However, if you look at the extractor, it just says that it's extracting slowly. And if you just wait a couple of days, so I skipped a couple of days without pulling any sap from the extractor. I just left them fill up and left them stay full. And you can see that it is starting to glow again. And it went from it's all dried up to the glow is fading. And if I wait about another four to five days, it should be bursting with energy again. So it's been six days later and you can see that it is now full of energy and full of life again. And the last tip is that you can glide further with the feather cape wearing the Fenris armor than you can wearing other armor. And that is because the Fenris armor increases your move speed. I have the feather cape on now. I have made sure that I don't have any additional stamina or anything like that. So we just have the base stuff. This is to help ensure that we get an accurate reading of how far we travel. We're going to walk all the way to the edge of this thing and we are going 
to jump and glide. And I'm holding shift down while I do this and we're just going to land right here. Now we're gonna put down a marker indicating this is where we landed. And now I'm going to equip the Fenris armor. And now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna walk forward. We're gonna jump and hold down shift so that we glide faster and further and you can see we landed right here. Now it's not a crazy big difference, but we did definitely gain some distance wearing the Fenris armor. Now, if I equip something like a padded set and we jump and glide, you will see that we actually lose a lot of distance on how far we can glide with it. And that is because it actually reduces our move speed by 5% for each piece. So you can do with this information what you will. Personally, I like running with the Fenris armor and the feather cape in the Mistlands because it allows for me to jump from mountaintop to mountaintop relatively easily because you can get that nice distance with it. But it's totally up to you. Those are the distances. This is with no armor this is with heavy armor and that is with the Fenris set. All right, and that is going to wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you found it helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and a notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Valheim videos. And if you're looking for another guide right now, you can find that on the screen right now. I wanna give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you're shy you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and share your support until next time thanks for watching